All right, kids, let's get started. So today we are going to actually make a MXF file in a multi-channel format at eight channels. And the reason we're doing this is because it is a format that every single television station for the most part will accept. So this is one of the reasons why we're doing it. And this is why I'm showing you how to do it today. So let's dive in, shall we? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to file and we're gonna to go to new and we are going to go to sequence or control N if you prefer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to settings, which is the first one on the right of sequence presets. And we're gonna make sure that our editing mode is Sony XD Cam HD 422 1080 NTSC. <clears throat> so that's quite a mouthful, uh, but that's what we want. And our time base is gonna be 2997 square pixels, upper field first, that all looks good. Sample rate 48,000, that looks good. And 1920 by 1080, that all looks good. So now we are gonna move over to tracks, which is right next to settings, literally right next to settings on the, as you may have expected, on the right. So I'm actually gonna delete this because you are going to get confused and it's already here. So I'm trying to show you what's here and it's not gonna help if there's all this other crap here. So we are gonna delete all this crap accordingly. There we go. So. Right now, it just says on mine, it remembers what I want. So I'm just gonna change this to what you're most likely to see, which is stereo, because you probably haven't gone into this before. So it's anything that it says under master, under the audio toggle, you are gonna wanna change that uh, if it doesn't say multi-channel. So we're gonna change that to multi-channel, which is right here. And the reason for that is because we want eight separate channels. So the other thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take our number of channels, which you can see to the right, and we're gonna change that from two to eight because that's the standard amount of channels that we want. And now that we have that, what we're gonna do is see this little plus button here, this beautiful plus button with the gray and the add a track there, kind of babying you here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click that and it's gonna make a new track. Now you wanna make sure that this audio track is mono. The audio tracks need to be mono, they cannot be stereo. If they do, they won't route properly. Now, this is presuming that you have already taken your stereo files in another application and have prepared them in individual mono files. But if you don't know how to do that, do not worry. I have a separate tutorial that shows you how to do that so that you can prepare them and then you can jump over to that and then come back to this. So I have you covered, it is in the description below. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make eight of these tracks. So we've got our first one, so this is one. So we're gonna go to our plus, which is blue now, and we're gonna go two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You don't need to really worry about the pan and balance, to be honest, because the server will do that. The only reason that you would really need to do that is if you don't want to hear everything and it's annoying for you but it's actually not going to make a difference to the server play it at the, the television station so that's pretty much it for that and you're going to want to make sure that your video is three tracks the reason for this is well you could do two you just want to have enough for your synchronized video track and you want to have room for captions as well your closed captions because most stations require closed captioning by law and you know people that have difficulty hearing should have the ability to read because it would really suck if you know you were not able to hear and uh, you were stuck visually at least you should be able to read it so we'll just call the sequence name whatever because you can call it whatever you want and then we are going to hit OK. The other thing you can do if you want, you can also choose to save a preset so you don't have to do it each time. But that's pretty self-explanatory, so we're just going to hit OK. There we go. So now we have our beautiful timeline here. And you can see that we have our individual files, like our individual audio tracks in the timeline. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to import the audio that we are going to use, our left and right mono tracks. So we're going to go File. We're gonna go import. I already have them here through the magic of television. Uh, not that I'm trying to sound like Lawrence Welk here, but now we're gonna hit open. So I'll just wait for those to populate. So now I have my two files here. So what we're gonna do 
is we are going to actually treat this as if it were a stereo file um, in terms of how we're routing it. So our left channel is actually going to go in audio one, so our first audio track, and then our right stereo channel is going to go in audio track two. And then for seven and eight, we're just going to duplicate that. So we're going to take our left file. So left is going to be channel seven and right is going to be channel eight. So if I zoom out here, you'll see that I've got, I'll give ourselves a little bit more room here so that you can actually see it. You'll see that we have four tracks. So track one and two. So one is left, two is right and then seven is left again, and then eight is right again. Now, if you were doing this as a surround sound file, you would map this a little bit differently. You would have, so what would happen is your track one would be front left, track two would be front right, track three would be center, track four would be rear left, track five would be rear right, and then track six would either be described video or an alternate language track such as Spanish or French. But we're just doing stereo today. And then of course, seven and eight will be, can be additional track, usually will be straight stereo for people that don't have surround. Uh, but you can map it any way you want, but that's typically how we do it. So that's pretty much it. But now we actually have to get it into a MXF file. So how do we do that? Well, here's how. We go to file, we go to export, we go to media or control M if you prefer, and we are gonna change our format accordingly. Now you might ask, why are we not doing H.264? Well, the reason that we're not doing H.264, even though that's perfectly acceptable for broadcast in a lot of cases, is if you have captions or other things that you need to add to it, different servers will parse in different ways. And we want to have a file that pretty much every server, every playout server at every type of TV station will take. And that is why we're going to use MXF because it works really well for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to format. I already have it selected, but we'll just do it so you can see it. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to scroll down to MXF OP1A. Some stations, some people like to call it OPIA. I was at a station where they like to call it Opia, which honestly to me sounds like the Phantom of the Opera with a speech impediment, but then I don't know how well that would have worked for his uh, singing lessons for Christine if she had to ask him to repeat himself six times, so I don't know. You tell me. I'm no opera singer. And we're going to change our preset to XDCam. So we're just going to scroll down through these billions and trillions and zillions of XDCAM presets here. And we are going to want XDCAM HD50 NTSC 60i. So I see that here and I'm going to select it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just check our video settings and make sure that they're okay. So right now I can see that they look fine, 1920 by 1080. 2997 upper first square pixels blah 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 so that all looks fantastic and of course if you are in England or other parts of Europe that are using PAL then of course you would be using a uh, PAL XD cam at 25 but other than that it's exactly the same so this all looks good on the video side of things. So right next to the video toggle, which you can see my cursor here, we're going to move over to audio. This is actually very important. You don't want to skip this step. Otherwise, there will be a lot of swearing, both from you and from the station. So we're going to go over to audio. And we're going to go to basic audio settings. And see where it says channels to channels? We don't want that. And it does that by default. So if you forget this part, this will actually bypass whatever you put in Premiere. So if you say you want eight channels, as we've done in Premiere, and you tell it two channels, it'll go, fuck you, I want two. So you have to tell it that you want eight so that it puts it in the right place, so to speak. Put the right thing in the hole. So putting the right stick in the hole is a very important lesson in all aspects of life, particularly here.
So we're going to change this. So by click, sorry, I'm going to click that toggle because you can't see the toggle. I'm going too fast. So click that toggle and we're going to switch that to eight channels. So that's pretty much it. And then captions, if you have captions, we're going to go over to captions. Now you can't see the options because they're grayed out, but if you were to have captions, you would just change your export options to embed them, which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then we would just hit export. Now, one of the things that is worth noting is a lot of people want to click all these toggles for the sake of clicking them because they think it'll make it better. I would not recommend checking the use maximum render quality for 1080 because the XD cam codec is extremely efficient and very good and given that's going to be your native resolution all you're going to do is you're going to have to wait three times as long for an encode for something that you're not going to be able to see a damn bit of difference so don't waste your time because that's all it is the only time that i recommend and when i use use maximum render quality is in some stations in the united states they're still running playout servers like snell for example that run 720p when you're doing a down res uh, from a 1080 master. Then you would want to use this so that you don't get jaggies and things like that. But we're not doing that here, so we're not going to worry about it. So don't check it. It just eats up time that doesn't need to be eaten up. And then you're just going to hit export. And that's it. That's pretty much all she wrote. So as long as you do this, this is a type of file that I guarantee you will work. And as long as you follow it in this manner, uh, the TV stations will be happy, you'll be happy, everybody will be happy dancing people, and you'll most importantly have plenty of time to do other things. And one of those things is not being worrying about this. So if this helped you out, please do hit the subscribe button. And uh, I have some other very interesting tutorials that hopefully will help. But until then, happy television making, and we'll see you next time.